this is Brandon. Today we're going to show you how to set up your admin account for receiving and routing your inbound calls using Chase Data's cloud-based contact center software. We will review topics such as how to set up call flows and how to prioritize calls for each department in your company using call queues as well as setting up greeting messages and announcements. So let's start from the beginning. Here are the steps to setting up an inbound campaign. To start, you'll need to order phone numbers from Chase Data's tech support staff by requesting incoming DIDs, or what we call direct inbound dial numbers. With each DID, you have the option of choosing a local, out-of-state, toll-free number, or even internal numbers, which work exclusively internally in your system for routing and conferencing purposes. If you have an existing phone number with another supplier, we can also port your numbers over as well. Let me help define a few key words that you'll need to know. Call queues are a series of numbers, whether DIDs or internal numbers, that are assigned to campaigns and prioritized to skills in our system. A ring group is a descriptive name that labels a single or a group of inbound sources. Examples of these would be sales, customer service, billing, etc. A call flow can also be considered as an IVR. This is where a caller can press digits to navigate to the phone menu to get to the information or person they are looking for. Once you have submitted your request to Chase Data's team, you should get a response within a few hours with your new number via email. And you should be able to view them in your administrator portal. Now let's start by opening the Chase Data cloud-based software administrator portal. First we will navigate to the inbound module on the left menu, select call flows and call queues, and select the call queues tab at the top of your screen. This is where you will see the numbers assigned to your account. The first thing you want to do is name your departments, which we refer to as ring groups, such as sales, customer service, and even billing. You will notice that there are other settings such as campaign assignment, the priority, and delay for relevant active skills. Let us say in this example I wanted to know all the ring groups that are associated with the support group or skill in this case. You will notice that the billing ring group is also associated with the support skill, but at a lower priority than the ring groups associated with the sales ring group. So we added a higher priority to the calls that came in from the sales ring group versus the billing ring group. This will help you to better organize which skills or groups of agents you would like to allow to handle incoming calls from a particular number or numbers. You can also set the delay which sets the time frame for keeping a call active for that assigned skill group for a period of time before cascading it to the next skill. Take note that each inbound source must belong to a unique campaign, as that allows us to keep better track of the call. Next, we will select the priority level for the selected skill for that source, 10 being the highest, 0 being the lowest. Notice you can have a ring group cascade to different agent skills as you assign various priority levels. You will see this reflected in the skills column where it shows the skills which are associated with that ring group, starting with the highest priority skill to the lowest priority skill for that ring group. Now that we have covered setting up your call queues, let us move over to our call flows tab. This is where if we wanted our callers to navigate through the IVR or a phone tree to get to their destination. You can simply skip this part if you want your callers to go directly to the ring groups. Notice all your ring groups will be displayed that will allow you on how you want the caller to navigate through the call flow by telling it how we want it to route the call based on the digits inputted by our caller. Like press 1 for sales or press 2 for support and it can route to either another ring group, an agent skill, campaign, or even someone's personal extension or voicemail. Let us now navigate to the Greetings and Announcements section of the Administrator Portal found in the left menu on your screen. This is where you will manage the greeting messages and announcements which will be played to the callers when they do call in. When they call in, the first recording played to them is going to be based on a call event. I am going to briefly talk about some major inbound event types to choose from. Please check out our video on adding greeting messages and announcements. Notice there are several event messages starting from greeting messages to whisper notifications. Greeting message. When a customer first calls into the system, you have the option to present them with a greeting message before they get placed into the inbound queue to be handled by an agent. 
This message is played in full unless the customer enters an extension number or an IVR option. Wait for operator. After the call has been connected and a customer is waiting for an agent, this is the message that will play while they wait. Music is commonly used here with intermittent prompts to the customer apologizing for extended wait time and assuring them that the agent will be with them shortly. No available operators. This message will be played while there are no longer any available agents logged into the campaign or there are no agents logged into the appropriate skill. It will typically prompt the customer to call back at a different time. Leave message after tone. This is a recording that serves to act like an answering machine. Your message plays and it prompts the customer to leave a message after the beat. This is specifically used when a customer presses 1 to go to voicemail, for example. Whisper notification. A recording set in place to notify an agent that an inbound call is connected. It can be any recorded message that will alert your agents that they are connected on a live inbound call. In blended dialing, it is great because your agents can more readily identify their inbound calls. For the purpose of this demonstration, I am going to upload a recording that will say something like, Thank you for calling Chase Data. Press 1 for sales or press 2 for support. I'm going to use this as my greeting message for a campaign we built in an earlier video. Next, we have to select the campaign to which it is assigned. You have the options of assigning this to a campaign, a ring group, an extension, or an agent skill. The system defaults to assign it to all campaigns, but we are going to select the demonstration campaign we made in another video. A few additional options are as follows. Using the termination field is to route calls elsewhere. It can also be called a find me or follow me, for example. If you want the calls to be routed to an external number when no one is logged in, you would simply select the no available operators event type, then you would set it to terminate to an extension. In the extension box, you would type one and then the 10 digit number. The next section in inbound is route by call source. Route by call source simply means when a particular phone number or call that has a prefix of let's say 407 can be routed to a destination on your system. Some of our options here are for the call to go to voicemail, agent skill, agent extension, or inbound source. This basically can be used to make sure a particular caller gets immediately routed to where you want them to go. However, using this tool you need to know the customer's number or similar format to configure your routing. Now that is going to conclude our inbound features on Chase Data's cloud software admin application. Please stay tuned for more quick videos in the future from Chase Data and thank you for watching.